Okay, what I'm doing this time is a double hook trace, J-hook style for fishing open beach, daylight period. Basically the fish that we'd be targeting are stumpies, pompano, it's more a Zulu land kind of a trace that we use. What we require for it is 19 kilo or basically 060 Kingfisher. 25 kilo is going to be the line between the two swivels for our double hook trace, 070 or 25 kilos. We're using a 3-0 ring soy and a 5 ring soy. The reason we're using the ring soy is they silver in color. We're fishing in very, very clean water. We're going a lot lighter on the line than that, okay? Combo swivel, five and six. Definitely works by far the best for that. It's a um, Kingfisher power combo one. A little bit of flotation, basically white. We're using white baits. Anti-tangle free sleeves just to protect it, keep the, uh, the nylon away from the actual, um, uh, keep the nylon from actually tangling up. Cone sinker or grapnel sinker depending where we're fishing and depending on how strong the wind is actually blowing up there. Thin latex cotton, very very important. Chocker hammer, pair of scissors and we're good to go. To start off with, let's get down to business. Let's take all of this away if possible. The main line between the two swivels, about a meter in length. Can make it a little bit longer, it doesn't really matter. Because this is one of those traces that you're going to clip and throw. A lot of times you need to get to that far rolling white water. Um, could be brown skates in the deep that you're looking for, but also could be a little bit of a cob. It's a very nice combination trace to use. Okay, so starting off. Big eye to the top, that's going to go to your leader. The bottom eye is where we're tying the 702. So again, it's very simple, it's a figure of eight. You can go back in our previous shows, I've tied it a million times. I'll just show you again how to do it. There's your figure of eight. Put your fingers inside between the actual swivel and that. Lubricate, pull tight, slide down. It's a very simple knot. I use it all the time, 99% of the time. That's the knot I'm going to be using. Cut it off as close as you want. 1.2, 1.3 meters in length. Second swivel going through the big eye. This is the bottom of the trace. Lubricate and slide it down slowly so you don't burn the line. Pull as tight as you can. Cut off tagging. You use this style trace as well a lot in the Eastern Cape for catching lessers, obviously bigger hooks, but that's pretty much what I've done here. Okay. Next, hooks. I'm going to take one of those. That'll be my 3.0. This one here is my 5-0, it's just a bigger hook, bigger bait, targeting a bigger fish. Okay, so those can go down there. And uh, 19 kilo, sometimes they even go down to 16 kg in the Kingfisher nylon. All I'm going to do, figure of eight. One, two, and again, three times. It's a very quick and easy trace to make. I like to make at least three of them up before I walk the beaches. Just saves a bit of time. One done. And you're making them at least 30 centimeters in length. Okay, I might be doing it a bit fast for some people, but like I say, you can just go and view how to do a figure of eight in our previous episodes of ASFN. Okay, nylon done. We're happy. That half of the job is now finished. Okay, oh, a bit stiff today. The big one, the 5 -0. and you're making it about 30 to 40 centimeters in length. I want to make this one about 30 centimeters. And again, do the figure of eight. Finger in, one, two, three times around. The the bigger the sea, or the harder the wind's blowing, or the bigger the surge is in the water, the shorter I make this trace. But a nice, calm, 
clear day when you're trying to get to a nice long bank it's far away 40 centimeters is what I recommend if it's very turbulent winds blowing a lot of current I make it shorter sometimes I do it up to 25 centimeters I don't make it longer than 20 centimeters or 25 centimeters okay top hook and again this is light fishing this is fishing with 20 to 30 pound braid or 040 as far as nylon goes like I say it's a light trace it's not a very heavy trace at all edible fish five six kilos but every now and again one of those brown skates will jump on it especially in summertime I'm perfect with that one I'm very happy with that just gonna get a bit of flotation because I want a lot of movement in it could be a kingfish around stuff like that okay uh, thin latex there it is I'm just gonna cut this down a bit in size the scissors is actually easier basically what we do is we just the eye of the hook comes pretty much in line with the back of the actual flotation that you're going to use the eye of the hook the point of the hook sorry and we just tie it on this is just to give more bulk and a little bit of flotation not too much the baits that we're going to use are very small baits let's do that quickly and all we do is just through through and through okay so ba basically that's the amount of flotation I want on it nothing more okay of course in my rush to do the trace I forgot to put my anti-tangle free sleeves on so I'll just give it a bit of a snip uh, anti-tangle free sleeve very important stops a lot of the tangling that may occur if the water is rough and a lot of times that's where you want to throw this bait into that rolling white water on the far bank so I'd rather just tie it now and show you how it's done slide that one down a little bit of lubrication every now and again saliva that is over the knot just to protect the knot it also hides the swivel you can actually push it up quite nice and far just to hide the swivel as well especially in those crystal clean days there we go let's do the bottom one just cut him Okay, okay. And again, just a figure of eight. Okay, there we go. Okay, grab another one of those foams. Bigger hook, obviously going to be a bigger piece of flotation. I'm just cutting in from the back. Okay. And again, very simple. Point of the hook, almost in line where you're going to actually start with the float, the foam, foam. Again, thin latex cotton works the best absolutely love this stuff easy to work with there we go if you need a lot more flotation you can just add another one it'll just bulk it up quite nicely especially if you go thicker on the actual main snooting or the line your hook line so if you need more flotation you just add another one to it and preferably underneath okay preferably underneath let me show you how it's done okay let's get that one off okay so basically you take that and add it underneath because it's in line with there 
and I've tied it, you've got a big gape still. If I had it against it, with the other one against it, there's very little gape left to actually hook the fish. That's why we tied so far back. Okay, let's just do this. And you can compress this foam quite nicely. It's a lovely foam to actually work with. You get them in red, you get them in white. We're making choco baits with it and prawn baits, so white is definitely a preferred bait, especially for the Zululand area. If I was in the Eastern Cape and I was using bloody baits like sardine and that, I would make it red. Just adds in to the color of the actual bait that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so we do that quickly. Again, just through, 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 through. And this thin latex will go totally translucent in the water as well. Just mold him a bit so he's round. <clears throat> okay, let's do the sinker snooting. Uh, 16 kilo, what have we got here? 19 kilo, it's fine. Okay. This part here is the bottom part of the actual trace. It's going to the sinker snooting or the cone sinker that we've got there or the weed eater grapnel or grapnel is up to you. Slide it down, pull, it's in a straight line, so it's fine, you can pull as hard as you want. And what we do, is we make it about that length. Okay, here we go, one, two, three. <clears throat> Slide it down, cut it off as close as you can because you don't want to get cotton tag caught around it and we just measure to see, okay perfect, I don't want longer than that. Also another little trick, most of these sinkers that you do get, unfortunately, the loops are made on it quite big, depending on the baits that you're doing. Because we're throwing a very small fine bait, that loop is too big. So we're just going to take a pair of side cutters and just cut him down. Just watch your eyes when you do this. Okay. So that the loop is a lot smaller. Okay, let's just have a look, see. That is perfect for what we're trying to achieve. Okay, perfect, 100%. Okay. I'm just going to show you a little trick, because it's a double hook trace, I just want to show you something here quickly, okay, it's a double hook trace, so what we're doing is that one, hooks up, you can throw it, it's nice and aerodynamic, but what do we do with our top hook, we don't want it flapping around and making a big mess, and it's a long trace, if you look at that, that's a very, very long trace to throw, um, unless you've got a long drop when you throw you're going to be wasting your time okay so what we do is we take one of our little clips this is basically one of the sinker clips that you get or kingfisher version and all i've done is i've basically just cut it off underneath so let me just grab one out and show you take out the packaging like so those clips away. And how we make it is we just bend this one, take our side cutters in there and uh, like I say every time just watch your eyes when you're doing this. Okay, very nice. So that's basically what we've done. We've just cut the clip, take our sinkers and we just modify it ever so slightly. Like that. That loop is still too big for me. I'm going to just give him another little snip here quickly. There we go. Okay, so we've got a lovely little loop there. Round those pliers. We'll always sort any problem out that you might have. Okay, just like that. We take our swivel, which is the top one with the big eye. We then stick that one through it, like so. Open it up, 
squeeze together so it doesn't come loose. And that's basically our second clip done. So what we'll do is we'll then take that one and hook it on there. Then this one is hooked on there. Okay, so basically once everything's hooked up, that's the entire length of our trace now at the end. When it hits the water, all of these come loose and you're good to go. Simple as that guys. Okay, so that's basically what that little clip does is allow you to hook on there. Okay, that's all it does. Okay, that's all we've really done. Okay, so now baiting. Let's take all of this away here. We want our latex cotton. And again, I've got pink prawn. Chocker, butterfly, okay, lovely. Ed can pink prawn. Ooh, very nice. We've got our uh, chocker. I'm just gonna take the blower part out over there. Put that down a bit. Over there, I'm very happy with that. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take myself a nice thick piece of chocker like that. Lay him there, and of course, I'm going to cut myself another piece out here. Okay, there's two options that we can do here. Okay. Basically, there's my bait. <clears throat> I'm just going to go through how we go about baiting it up. Okay. The top hook can either be a blob bait, if you want. In other words, it can be a bait that you take a piece there, hit it with a chocker hammer, and it is a small ball about the size of my finger not bigger than that, it throws nicely if you need to get the distance, that's the baits that I would actually opt for two big blob baits, done, very simple but let's play around so I'm going to take my prawn, it's a little bit bigger than what I want so I'm just going to cut him down a bit like that we're going to go like this we wrap it around over there And we just wrap it around like that. So that's basically your paw, prawn all wrapped up around it. A lot of smell, a lot of flavor. This is the blower of the chocker. And I'm just going to take it with the chocker hammer. And basically all we're doing there is hitting it. Just to soften it up a bit. Not much on the tentacles. But this part here is what we want to start trimming down. These little wings on the side. So we start trimming it down trimming it down, cutting those hard little pieces off. Soft side of the chocker cho hammer. When I say the soft side of the chocker hammer, the, the one that's got the fine teeth on it. And then, we hit that so nice and soft that it is almost like it's not. Okay, wrap that the other way around. So it's sitting there like that. I am over the actual prawn bait like so 
and go back and we just tie them off. Again, just one more time, over, under, through, around, and that is done. So that is our top hook finished. So basically what it's looking like is a little squid bait moving around up in the air there. Okay, second bait is obviously the thicker piece of chocker and again all I want to do is take it, hit it with the chocker hammer, the big teeth on the actual chocker hammer, that part there, because I want to soften it up quite a bit and this is with the flesh showing up. Okay, so basically I've softened this part on, and again, I'm taking it on the top like that, the thin latex cotton, and we just give it a pull, and you lightly wrap it around. Okay, it's nice, tender. Okay, so that's basically all that we've done, is we've got the two tentacles wrapped in there, we're going to take the thick piece of our chocker now, like so, and we're putting the skin side, top side, the thick part of the actual chocker hammer we're going to hit it with. Okay, so basically what's happened there is I've hit it. This is almost like, it's nice, it's paper thin, very soft, a lot of smell coming out of it. And we're gonna wrap that around the chocker bait. Pretty much like we do our blob baits. It's gonna allow a lot of smell, it's gonna fluff up and become a lot bigger in the water than what it actually is, yeah? And that's basically it. Done. Okay. So there it is. Now that's the bottom one, which is the bigger one. Okay, now let's just clip everything and show you what the whole thing baited looks like when it's finished. So basically that one's gonna go on there. It's just so much easier when it's actually on your rod and you're doing this on your rod. Second hook. And there we go guys. That's obviously going to your leader. There's your top hook with the prawn on it. There's the bottom hook. When you throw this, it's absolutely aerodynamic when it goes through the air. So you've got the tentacles trailing behind on both baits. It's short, so you can throw it a lot further, you can wade in the water. This will go like an absolute bomb through the air. When it hits the water, these two fall off, as it always does. They float up because of the flotation in it, and then it'll float around looking like a little squid on both of them. Okay, so at the end of the day, this is what your two traces look like. And remember, it's going to be floating up. Okay. That is the one that I recommend you look at when you want to fish vital and throw long distances for catching stumpies, pompano, um, your kingfish, GT, stuff like that. That's basically what you're looking at.